Hello and welcome to Video DNA, where the English is bad and the tutorials are good. I'm Irat Bib and today I'm gonna show you how you can make a 3D image. Yeah, I know, you've seen all of those techniques. Well, actually, this one you haven't seen yet. Check this out. Okay, so what is so different about this technique? Actually, most of the technique is not very different. Yeah, we're gonna get inside Photoshop and we're gonna break up the image uh, so we can have a few layers uh, in the depth and we will put them in After Effects and we will spread them in Z space. Okay, but you haven't seen the grass layer. Look at the grass layer and this is actually the important thing in this technique. Uh, I can see that if I'm gonna look from above, I can see that it's somehow projected towards the camera. So how you can do this, let's start with Photoshop. First of all, if you know how to make this thing Photoshop, skip ahead three or four minutes, I'll see you then. Anyway, if you don't, we need to break up this image to a few layers and then we're gonna distribute them in space, in Z space, in After Effects. So first of all, I want to make a layer of Julie. So let's select her with a quick selection tool and it works pretty easy and pretty simple. I'm gonna select, drag and select, and if something doesn't look so good, I can press Alt and unselect it. Pretty straightforward. This looks okay. Doesn't have to be perfect, just needs to look okay because the background is gonna be there anyway, this background. So we have a selection of Julie. Now I want to duplicate her to a, another layer. So I'm gonna go to layer, new, layer via copy or just control J and I have our first layer, Julie. Okay, now if I turn off Julie layer, I can see that I can still see her in the background layer. So I'm gonna control click Julie to select her. And now I will go to, and I'll expand the, by two pixels. And now what I wanna do is remove her from the background. So I'm gonna go to edit, fill, I'm gonna go to content aware and I'm gonna press OK. And most of the time it doesn't work so well, but this time it works like magic. So I'm gonna press Ctrl D to deselect our selection. And I can see that I still have some spots from Julie. So I'm gonna take the spot healing brush tool, which is kinda neat, works semi-automatically. No, it works automatically. And like the content will feel it doesn't work so well, but here it makes magic. Well, this looks pretty good. Um, yeah, I think I'm done with Julie. Now for the next layer, I want to separate the grass. So I'm gonna select it quickly by dragging. Super, control J, so it will be a new layer of grass and now I want to delete it from the background not yet okay now let's create the tree layers so I'm gonna select again the quick selection tool and I'm gonna select those trees alt in between them perfect and those trees too Great. And control J so they will be separated to another layer. I'm going to call this layer trees. So now I want to remove them. So I'm going to take the spot healing brush and on the background layer, I'm just going to draw like this. Doesn't have to be perfect, just needs to look good. This doesn't look good enough. Better better, better, perfect. And now for those trees, amazing. So I have a little bit more spare room. I, I don't want to delete the grass completely. I just want to create a little region that I can still see the mountain. So I'm gonna take the stamp tool and I want to all click to sample and then 
I can draw the area I've just sampled. I'm going to sample again until I'm going to get the data that I need or and want. And here I'm going to sample this area. I'm going to draw it downwards. And over here, yeah, this is a little bit tedious. Um, but actually, if you don't want to use the stamp tool, or you don't like this kind of work, you can always flip burgers for a living. Well, anyway, it looks like we're done. And yeah, it looks good. I have the tree layer, the grass layer, and Julie layer. So I'm gonna save this, but I already saved it. So I'm gonna get inside After Effects. And let's start from the beginning. I'm gonna go to File, New, New Project. I'm gonna open a new project and when I'm going to import the Photoshop file, it's going to create a composition for me. And I'm going to choose composition, retain layer sizes. Although you can do it with composition. If you know the difference, that's super. I'm going to press OK and I'm going to double click to enter the composition. And now I have this image. So let's go to half so I can see better. And now I want to select all of the layers and turn on their 3D. First of all, I want to take the background layer and I want to push it back in Z space. And now I can scale it back until it's gonna be in the same size again in the screen. But before I go further, I want to take a little snapshot so I can see it later if I need to. You will see. Anyway, uh, Julie is gonna stay right over here and I want to push the trees in the back, but that's going to be later. And now the tricky part. So this is the unique thing in this technique. Mostly when you're doing um, this kind of work, um, you just push back or forward some layers. But what this technique differs from other techniques is that it takes care of things that are not in front of the camera. So I'm going to open a new camera. And I'm going to make sure it's 50 millimeters uh, because I don't want anything to change while I open it. And now I just push this layer back and it looks pretty bad. And this is the regular technique. And what this technique does is something a little bit different. I'm going to rotate on the X value, but I want to make sure that it rotates through Julie's legs. So I'm going to take the anchor point tool. I'm going to take the anchor point right over here and then I'm going to rotate on the X again and this time I'm going to stretch it all the way back and I can even rotate it even further like this. Okay, so what I'm going to get is a layer that is not in front of us but it lays beneath Julie and maybe I'm going to rotate it even a little bit further right over here and now I want to create a new camera and again I'm gonna make sure that it's 50 millimeters so nothing will change and I can see that something is starting to happen but it doesn't look so good so I need to fix the created perspective so it will look again like in the beginning so for that I'm gonna call the corner pin effect which does an amazing job I can take every one of the pins and push them back to the place and this will create a distortion of the image that will set it right back to how it's supposed to look. I can check by pressing the show snapshot button if I'm accurate enough. Okay and now I can see that if I'm gonna go to full resolution I can see that this is a little bit weird. It doesn't look good because it's a little bit pixelated. So what we can do is select the layer, the grass layer. I'm going to pre-compose it. And grass comp is a good name. And I'm going to leave all attributes so the effect will stay outside. I'm going to press OK, go inside, and I'm going to go to the composition setting. And I'm going to take this layer, take this comp, and I'm going to double the size of it to the width and to the height. I'm going to press OK and I'm going to fit this right into the comp by transform fit to comp 
and I'm gonna go back outside and all I need to do right now is to scale it halfway and it's gonna be exactly as it was and now if I look again the flowers look better amazing okay so I have a camera everything looks just right just need to put those trees back into place and I can see that something really nice is going to happen I'm gonna go to the left view and while the trees are selected I'm gonna push them back so this is where the grass layer starts I'm gonna push it right over here okay I'm gonna go again to the active camera and now I'm gonna scale it back so it's gonna look right like exactly it was in the beginning okay so now I can rotate with a camera I can see that I have a pretty limited angle of view but I can work with that because right about now I have a really nice really decent effect I'm gonna take the camera back I'm gonna start over here maybe even further back so I can see the depth effect that I've created but it doesn't look so good since I'm going back enough to see the edges of the layer so what can I do I can put it like a picture on the wall so I'm gonna import a picture on the wall and in this picture you can see me and my amazing fiance Roberta and now I want to double click this layer and I'm gonna take the mask tool and I'm gonna mask us out by the way this wall does not exist anywhere okay. that looks pretty good and I'm gonna go back to the mask and I'm gonna subtract it and I'm gonna feather it I think by four pixels and by pressing double M I can change the expansion to minus four pixels and now I can go back and I can see that they have this frame I'm gonna turn this layer 3d and now I want to push it to the right place so I'm gonna go actually now I'm gonna go to the custom view and I'm gonna take it forward okay until I can see that it's right where the grass begins I'm gonna go back to the active camera and I'm gonna scale it up until it goes out of the frame like this and maybe I can take it even to the left <clears throat> actually I scale it too much and this looks perfect and if I'm gonna go to the custom view I can maybe push it back just a little bit so there will be no edges of the grass and maybe take it even a little bit up and a little bit right over here and maybe just a little bit perfect and now I can go to the active camera and I now I can enter the image like this okay this is nice maybe I'm gonna start from a different angle um, first of all I want to check this angle so I'm gonna go to the camera and I'm gonna press P to reveal the position and shift A to reveal also the point of interest and this will be the keyframes that I'm gonna finish so after I think four or five seconds I'm gonna be right over here and I already see that this comp is too long so I'm gonna put my marker time marker right over here and I'm gonna press N on the keyboard right click and trim comp okay so this is where I'm ending the animation now I'm gonna pull back and I'm gonna take a little angle and maybe even go back like this and like this and now I can see the edges of the layer which is not good but I can fix this without scaling up the layer by taking repeat tile and expand it to the right and if I can see changes in color I can always unfold it so it looks better and let's see what we have here yeah this looks pretty nice maybe I can take the camera even further in like this or so but yeah this looks pretty nice and let's see what we have here 
I can see that I have again the same problem right over here with the background layer and a little bit of the grass but if I'm gonna fix the background layer if I'm not mistaken it's gonna fix the grass too in a way and maybe it's unfolded of course and even downwards so this will look like this and maybe this I can maybe take the camera even to a further angle maybe I'm gonna turn it a bit but you can change the camera angle as much as you'd like I'm gonna finish the camera right over here maybe just one little thing I'm gonna I'm gonna press R on the keyboard shift R while the camera is selected and now I'm gonna check the Z rotation I'm gonna create a keyframe and here at first I'm gonna rotate it a bit so I'm gonna have this nice an animation while I enter the image and here you can change the repeat tile but you know it depends on the angle and the camera animation that you choose so I'm gonna leave it like this I'm gonna select those keyframes right click and I'm gonna choose keyframe assistant is is in it's really there believe me and now I can see that the animation looks pretty good okay perfect and uh, the last thing I want to do maybe I'm gonna add a little animation to Julie's so it will not look like a still image so I'm gonna take the, the puppet but first I'm gonna enter the layer by double clicking it and I'm gonna put some puppet pins on her right over here and here so she will not move enough and uh, if you know this effect it creates keyframes so I can take the created keyframes take them back and actually maybe here this is how she will end and before that her arms will be a little bit lower so it will look like she's hola amigos okay she's saying hello to everyone um, it looks okay maybe uh, actually we can make her fly but no I'm not gonna do it it's too stupid anyway okay this is the effect into here and now she's gonna take her arm up and we can change those keyframes to easy ease by pressing F9 I hope you learned something and and I hope that you're gonna create cool things with this technique uh, you're more than welcome to enter our site and check out the new entries of the tutorials and the blog and go to the products and the arrow preset it's pretty cool and pretty amazing it's gonna save you a lot of time and don't forget to go back down to every page doesn't matter which one and you can press to follow us on Facebook subscribe to us on YouTube and even follow us on Instagram. I'm Alan Tabib for Video DNA. See you next time.